Welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in listen only mode. Today's webinar is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now I'd like to turn the call over to your host, Kim Brown. Kim. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on veterans, who are they, where they are, and what are their needs. My name is Kim Brown, and I'm a training specialist here in the U.S. Census Bureau. I want to thank you for joining us today for the Exploring the Diversity of Census Bureau Data webinar series. This new series, created by the Census Academy team here at the Census Bureau, is meant to assist the novice to intermediate data user. These webinars are a great opportunity for you to learn from our experts about how to access the Census Bureau's data, tools, and resources. If you wish to follow along, take a moment now to open an additional browser. You can register for any of the webinars by accessing census.gov. We will post the webinars monthly for early registration. Just visit census.gov slash academy. Before I introduce today's speakers, let's go over a few housekeeping rules. As mentioned earlier, this webinar is being recorded. For your convenience, it will be uploaded to our Census Academy site with all supplemental materials relating to the webinar within 30 business days. We welcome written questions during the webinar. Please submit your written questions using the Q&A panel, which is at the bottom center or right side of your WebEx screen. Please take a moment to locate that now. Once you found the QA panel, make sure to choose All Panelists from the drop-down menu. This will ensure we see your question. Also, we ask that you do not include any personal or business identifiable information with your questions. We suggest keeping the chat panel open as well as we will provide key links and other resources throughout the webinar. Keep in mind, you won't be able to respond to the chat. That is for us to send our links and other resources related to the presentation. In the chat box, we will be sharing the evaluation link. We are very interested in hearing from you on how we are doing. To complete the evaluation, you will click on the link on the white redirect screen when it comes up at the completion of the webinar. We hope you'll take the time to complete as we strive to perfect what training we offer. My colleagues Kelly Karras and Victoria Brooks will be monitoring the Q&A panel. As time allows, we will answer your question directly through the Q&A panel, or we will share your question with the presenter to respond to during the webinar. If we do not get to all questions with a response during the webinar, we will post the questions and responses with the webinar material on the census.gov slash academy site within 30 business days. As you know, we are in a virtual environment and sometimes technical difficulties might occur. If you have any issues, try a different browser such as Chrome or consider logging out and coming back into the session. If you're having audio issues, try selecting the computer audio or calling into the webinar via phone. Now I'd like to introduce our speakers, Dave Schuler and Misty Slater. Thanks again for being here with us today. Misty, you may begin. Who they are, where they are, and what their needs are. We are speaking about veterans today, which I am one and so is Dave. Our agenda, we will have some objectives. We're going to cover some surveys that capture veteran data or vet data on veterans, I should say. It sounds better. Um, I'm going to go over some census definitions that we'll be using. Um, I have the first scenario and then we're going to go into Dave's part, which is census veteran veteran data overview. He's going to touch on the annual business survey because it captures veteran data as well. Another scenario and then we will have time for questions and comments. I am a disabled Air Force retiree. I started with the Census Bureau back in 2019 as the media specialist over Idaho, Nevada, and Oregon for the 2020 Census. And then I came back in August of 2022 
in the new role as a data dissemination specialist, which I am currently am right now. Dave? Dave served in the Marine Corps for 10 years. He is also a data dissemination specialist and has been with the Bureau since 2014. He also has a, a long list of accomplishments on his uh, slide and I'm going to go to the next, which is our objectives. Uh, Census Bureau data will be covering veteran data and you'll learn how to access demographic, economic and business owner veteran data. So these are surveys that collect that capture veteran data. We have the current population survey. Survey of income and program participation American business survey, which Dave will touch on and I am focusing on the American community survey. In the chat during this webinar, useful links will be provided to you by our moderators. You will have more information on CPS and SIP if, if you so choose, but they will be provided for you shortly. The American Community Survey is our largest sample size of 3.5 million addresses yearly. We have three different estimates. We have a one year for geog geography populations at 65,000 or more. We have supplemental for 20,000 plus, and then we have five year estimates, which are available for all geographies down to the census block group. They also are the best estimate to use if you're using, um, if you're looking for data that might be in smaller populations, which I will be focusing on using the five year estimates today. We're going to go over the definitions of how the Census Bureau defines a veteran. Again, this is the Census Bureau's definition. Census Bureau defines, <clears throat> excuse me, people who have served on active, active duty military service in and in service in the military reserves and National Guard. But they have, but the reserves and National Guard have needed to be called or ordered to active duty to be considered a veteran by the Census Bureau definition. Merchant Marines that served during World War II also encompasses the Census Bureau definition. However, 17 year olds that could possibly be veterans are not captured because ACS data products are restricted to the population 18 years and older. This graphic, shows cash and non cash benefits. Now, I, like I said, I am a disabled veteran. Now I receive, I might, I'm a retired Air Force veteran, but I do not get a re military retirement because I was medically retired. So I don't get the military uh, retirement, but I do get the VA disability compensation. I also have um, VA mortgage and I get health care insurance since my disability rating is high enough where they cover all of my health care. Census Bureau um, definition of poverty. It's family is family income is compared to the poverty threshold. And if that family in income is below the threshold, the family is in poverty. If you want a more in depth description of how the Census Bureau defines poverty, that will be put in the chat for you with a link. But we're using Census Bureau definitions for the fact that it is Census Bureau data that we will be showing. So now we are on to the first scenario. Now Maria is moving to New York State. She can work remotely, but her employer does have offices in New York City and in Buffalo. She comes from a family of veterans and wants to get back to her community but she needs to figure out where she wants to set up to and then call her community. She has decided that she is gonna peruse New York State to set up a nonprofit to help disabled veterans experiencing poverty and is basing the data off of where she lives. So we are gonna be looking at New York today and we're gonna be looking at the counties and going into, let me hurry and pull up. No, nope, sorry, wrong thing. I get 
content and I'm going to go Chrome. So right now we are going to go to datacensus.gov and we are going to start looking and seeing where the veterans are at. Now, I'm going to apologize in advance just in case I have any glitches. So we're going to look at the nation first. So we're going to look at all states. We'll click all states. And then we're going to scan down and look at topics. We're going to go to populations and people. And then there is veterans right there. We'll click search. Right now, we're going to look at all the states just to see what the veterans are at, even though we know we're going to look at New York. Now, there's there's two. There's the one year supplements and the five year that I was talking about. I'll hurry and show you both just so you can get a little idea. And this is going to show the percentage of veterans by population. It's it's not showing the number of like the the total number of veterans on this on this right now because I just have percentage. Alaska leads the pack. The five year estimate was 11.5%. And then New York had 4%. And if we go back and look at the one year, and the one year is more timely, but the five year is more of a picture of the last five years. So right now, Alaska is showing 10.1. So that means one out of every 10 people in Alaska is a veteran. Now, that number might be a little bit lower because some people might have moved out of Alaska. There are a few military bases there, so that number will vary. And then New York right now, New York has the lowest percentage of veterans by population. New York is at 3.7. Fun fact, California houses one third of all of the U.S. veterans. So now we know how to look and see where the veterans are at across the nation. In case you are interested in your state, you know how to get there. Now I'm going to focus on New York. And I want to look at all the counties in New York. So let's get down to New York. All counties. And she's interested in the county with the most, the most veteran population. We're going to go off the five-year estimate because there are counties in New York State that have less than 65,000 people. And then this, ta this table is large. Oh, no, I, sorry, wrong button. I want to open anyway. We also will break it down into periods of service. And it's just not listed on this. That is Alabama. Why did it show Alabama? Oh, okay. Let me hurry and take that off. Apologies. Forgot to take all the states off. I just want the counties of New York. Okay. Now, this will give you a lot of different stuff. You can hide the margin of error. You can hide different things like the percentage. I don't really want to look at those. I want to look at the hard numbers. You can also download these tables or you can share them. I have downloaded it. Let me make sure it will show. Let me, is it, um, are you seeing my Excel spreadsheet? We're seeing your web browser, Misty. Okay. Okay. Well, I was going to show you that I, you can download it to Excel and I had hidden the percent and everything because I just find it a little bit easier. I went through and I looked and I found out that Erie County in New York had the largest number, surprisingly, of veterans in the state of New York. I really thought it would be in the New York City area, but it is not. Erie County houses uh, Buffalo, I do believe. So you can go down and you can look at over here, actually, it breaks it down by veteran. And so you see there's 74,489 veterans in Erie County for a five-year estimate. So she gets the number, she sees that there's a lot, that's the county that she wants to focus on now. So she is going to go and look at 
just the poverty. She's going to look at poverty. She still wants veterans. She still wants all counties. And she's going to add income and poverty. And then you're going to click poverty and click on poverty. A link will be provided on our different, um, the ways we measure different po poverty. We have supplemental and official. I'm just going with poverty. We have two data sets here, a B and a C. The B right now is only showing one year estimates. It's more of a, it's a detailed table. The C has the same data, but it's a little bit more um, collapsed. And I wanna get five year data. So I'm gonna use C21007 and click on five year estimates. Now again, let's get rid of the margin of error. We're going to go over again and look at Erie at the same time. You know, we can, you can see the Brox County has over 12,000. There's a lot of veterans in New York. And Erie County has 21,571 with some sort of disability or um, poverty status, sorry, or not in poverty status, disability with poverty is 600. And Excuse me, and they have they are under the poverty status. So she has a number, but there's a decent amount of veterans in Erie County that are having issues. Then she wants to go look at service connected disability. So she's going to get rid of poverty. It goes back to your set of veteran data sets. And she's going to add results to 25. She's going to scan down and look and you can break. You can break these down by age, by sex, um, by demographic. But I am looking for service connected disability. And I want the 5 year estimates. Get rid of the margin of error again, and we're going to go over to Erie. So, Erie has 37,000 that do not have a service connected disability rating, but that does not mean that they do not have a service connected disability. It just means that it has not been approved by the VA. They might be going through the process of trying to get it added. And then you have the difference. And, and with these percentage, veterans are can have access to different um, entitlements. Um, I mean, I have a 0% rating, so I don't get anything for it right now. But if that condition were to start um, becoming a problem again, then I could go back to the VA, file another claim to get that um, increase. So then I wouldn't, if I just had zero, then I would be somewhere up in here. But she's looking at these numbers and she sees that there's a decent amount of people that have higher than 70%, which means they probably have a, a decent amount of uh, health care issues. Uh, I'm in this bracket, and uh, I know from experience I do. So she sees that, and it's solidifying her, her idea that she is going to be settling in Erie County. And the last thing she wants to look at is she wants to look at the veterans' ages. So she's going to go back to... Let me see. She wants to look at, sorry, wrong. She wants to look at the B21001 and the five year estimate table. And then she wants to get by the margin of error again and go over to Erie County. Okay. So. You see that number that we found, and then you have the total number of veterans for males is 44,021. And you're, you'll see the female number. You, you can tell it's, it's not very big since the total population of veterans is over a little over 47,000. And then you, you're looking at the ages, and there's not many that are 18 to 34. But you look at the older ages, and they have an older veteran population. They have almost 8,000 at 55 to 64. They have over 12,000, 
65 to 74. And then veterans over 75 for males. These are all males. Over 12,000, almost 13,000. And then you look at the theme, female numbers and it's almost 3,500. And you look at the ages and the younger ages are small. I mean, they're all small, but if you get to the older ones, I mean, they have some older veterans, but the older veterans have smaller numbers. And you saw that the male numbers didn't, but back during the time that these women served, they were highly outnumbered because not many were, women were serving at the time. And the service connected disability rating was added to the American Community Survey in order to help the VA measure a veteran service connected disability compensation entitlement status. So it helps the VA accurately anticipate the need for VA care and its associated costs across the country. And this is also used to help the VA decide where they need to um, add more cemeteries at as well. So Maria has the numbers. Total, popula uh, total veteran population of Erie County is 47,489. And over half of e Erie County veterans are over the age of 65. So Maria has decided that she is going to start her process of like, this is to scratch the surface. This is where she started first to actually set up a nonprofit in Erie County to help veterans in that county with their health care and, um, and poverty needs. And now we are on to Dave. Oh, I forgot a slide. Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, can we see my screen? Yes, I can. Oh, That's oh. just, you can go past that slide. That's fine. No, uh, you can see that. You can, you can see the yep. uh, demo up there, right? Yep. Okay. Everything's good. Good job. Thanks, Misty. I really appreciate it. Okay, so we talk about the types of things that we can get out of uh, the, um, the uh, data.census.gov and the, uh, in this case, the uh, ACS 2002 uh, data set and the five year data set, excuse me. Um, we see that we have. Uh, you know, a number of uh, veterans, 17 million uh, point four. And and we have uh, that represents 16.6% uh, 6 .6 of our total population. I know we'll just go down. Um, you, you can read them there. We got 1.7% uh, of the World War II veterans are still living. And unfortunately, that number goes down every day. And there are uh, 3.9 million veterans, uh, 75 years and over. To stay with the largest um, veteran population is California. Uh, you see the top five numbers there. Uh, and then Alaska has 11% uh, of the vets per population. Uh, that's the highest percentage per population. Okay. Okay. And here we see, uh, again, from the five-year estimates, um, we're able to see that uh, the number of U.S. veterans has been um, uh, declining uh, over the years since, US, uh, since 2000. Uh, and a lot of that is, you know, there's probably reasons like drawdown and things like that that are um, causing that to happen. I'm not going to analyze that. But then down here, you can see that um, you can see the numbers as they uh, as they were in 2000 through the years and uh, in 2022. So just doing the um, the analysis of each period it would come. Uh, uh, a period of, of war, uh, a period of service, excuse me, period of service. And then there's the, you know, the peacetime veterans, which um, 
I'll give a shout out to. They are the ones that are keeping the world running while the world's not at war. Get some more data, some poverty and disability data. Um, we see here that uh, uh, from 18 to 64, um, of the 8 million veterans uh, in that group, uh, 612,492 are below the, the poverty level. Um, the number with disabilities is uh, 22,000, I'm sorry, 225,094. Okay. And then there's a group here, um, you know, that makes up the non-disabled uh, veterans in that group. Uh, in the um, 65 and over group, there's 7 million veterans. And uh, you can see the breakouts here. Uh, there's uh, half a million uh, plus living in poverty and a good deal with, um, with disabilities. So there's currently 502,225 veterans who are both disabled and living below the poverty line. That's it for, uh, for demographics. I am now gonna uh, flip over to uh, uh, talk about the business side of things. And just a real quick overview here of the, uh, of the annual business survey, which is uh, one of our surveys beyond the economic census that provides a multitude of data about business owners and uh, if they have a veteran status or not. Okay. Veteran-owned employers in the U.S. are uh, across the range of industries. And um, Cody, the highest number was, it is of business owners, of people in the professional, scientific, and technical services. Construction next. And you get an idea of how they're uh, distributed across. Um, total for all business types, 331,151 veterans are, are owners or uh, part, half owned a, uh, a business. Okay. I want to move on to scenario number two. And that is, um, we're going to introduce uh, Norma, who's uh, Maria's sister. And Norma is going to uh, help Maria uh, research the uh, um, Buffalo area for um, competition, metro area for competition and opportunities uh, for business funds. Now, Norma needs to get every business has a North American industry classification code. And um, hers for her particular business is 813311. And at the bottom of the page here, I also note that if you want to find um, uh, you'll find how I got there. Uh, I tell you how to look it up and search from the uh, NAICS code lookup page. Okay, so the annual, using the annual business survey to discover, uh, to discover how many female veteran business owners there are. Uh, and I would say in the state of New York, uh, across all industries, the sectors. So again, we're, we're narrowing it down here. We're not just looking at the number of veterans, but the number of uh, female uh, veterans as well who are business owners. So for that, we're going to go out to Just to verify my uh, my uh, 
browser is up right now? No, it's still on your scenario, Dave. Oh, uh, okay. You don't see the browser. Let me go ahead and share that. Bear with me a moment here. Okay, I'm going to open my browser on the screen now. And It's uh, still showing the presentation. There you go. Now you're on there. Okay. All right. Um, again, uh, the finding the North American classification system codes um, are actually pretty easy to do. Uh, and you can go on and you can search uh, uh, veterans here. <laughs> In the uh, keyword, I'm doing it for the 2022 um, uh, next search every five years. The economic census happens, and if any businesses are reclassified, they're reclassified uh, during that uh, starting at that time period. Okay. What did I do here? Veteran. Uh, Okay, so it's putting in a veteran uh, gives me the uh, possible codes that I can use for the type of business nonprofit that they want to open. And once we have that, um, we can then go in and find the data we're looking for. So in order to find that data, let's go ahead and flip open. Okay. Uh, to find that data, we're going to go down and we're going to say um, we want the uh, state of New York. Okay, and then we want um, then we want to go down and choose topics, business and the economy. And up here at the top, business owner characteristics, in the next column. And then we're going to slide all the way down to um, the owner veteran status, and we're going to check that. Now, keep in mind, we can, we can uh, uh, go in and specifically look at other uh, components of the annual business survey. Okay. So now you got to come down here on the right hand corner of the screen uh, and hit the search button. Okay. And we're going to pull up a series of uh, uh, charts here. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the first one. Um, which this is uh, the annual business survey. And I'm going to change a couple of things over here on the filters. And um, we're going to go down and we're going to change the veteran, meaning of veteran code. And we're going to go down and we are going to click veteran. And equally in uh, veteran, non veteran owned. And then we're going to go up to the uh, meaning of sex. And we're going to choose the female. We're going to apply that. Okay. And now we come up with what we see is let me get all this stuff out of the way and make this a little bigger for us. Okay. What we see is that we have the ability to then uh, see it, what it is and uh, uh, how many uh, female um, veterans there are. Uh, in New York, in all business categories, in all business industries. Then um, 
we're going to uh, scroll down here a little bit and we're going to check out, remember our, our North American industry code is 813311. And we're going to scroll down here to the um, 81 category. Okay, it's not showing me that. But at any rate, um, we would go in and we would uh, um, take a look at uh, the female. In this case, we're just going to throw it into agriculture for purposes of continuity. Um, when it when it comes up and it does a search and it tells you that uh, the table is too big to open. If you open the table anyway, it's going to um, it's going to uh, give you only a certain amount of lines. It's going to be uh, uh, sequestered off here. Um, one way I can get around that is I can filter and tell it that I just want a. Um, The meaning of NAICS code, and I'm going to unselect, and in this case, I'm going to select uh, 81, which uh, the uh, Norma and Maria's business fall into uh, that classification. Okay. Going to apply that, and you'll see here that we have a little more workable. Um, uh, a little more workable um, uh, document to work with on the screen. And of course, you can always um, export this to Excel or drop it to a, a CDS file um, and be able to look at and manipulate the data there. But since we're showing off data.census.gov, um, I will remain here, okay? And we're gonna go, um, we're just interested in uh, uh, the total amount, which is the total of um, all uh, of all uh, veterans, female veterans, um, who have let me get rid of the filters here. Okay, who have um, uh, own a business within uh, um, the, the sector 81, okay? So with, uh, with that, we're gonna go over and we're gonna see that there are 938, I'm sorry, 9,873 9, uh, employer firms in New York uh, that have this. Now this data can be broken down uh, by you know U.S. data and uh, by state and by metro area, okay. and uh, uh, lower level data data gets very tough to see, especially in the uh, economic census. You'll see this on the demographic side as well occasionally, um, where it gives us a uh, a. Uh, in this case, notation S. And what does that mean for us? Well, that means I'm going to, I'm actually going to go up here to notes up here because that's how I normally do it. It opens up the um, uh, it opens up the notes for that particular document, and um, uh, if we scroll down, it tells us all the particulars. Uh, tells us what uh, data set, what table, uh, what data set we're in. Um, in this case, we're in table uh, um, annual business uh, uh, survey 21 um, for 2021. And then the table we're looking at is um, the 
zero zero CSA zero and I forgot the one on there. Zero one. Okay. And gives us an idea of when it was released. And also if there's any uh information that they need to um you know they need to pass on. Okay, and then it'll tell you about what's in the table. And then if we scroll down here to the bottom, and this is at the bottom of, of every one of the notes. It has um, uh, a symbol meaning for what that S was for. If we remember, we got S up here. Uh, the S tells us that the estimate does not meet publication standards because of high sampling variability, poor response quality, and other concerns about the estimate quality. Published estimates derived from this table uh, sub, uh, table by subtraction are subject to the same limitations uh, that should be attributed to the U.S. Census Bureau. Basically, what they're saying is we have employed um, uh, uh, disclosure avoidance uh, in the business data. We do not disclose uh, any business name nor individual uh, in our data. That is uh, the, the use of uh, data avoidance method to uh, uh, take, that, take that information out. But that doesn't mean it went away. Again, we could go up to the national level and we should be able to see a real life number there. Okay. And there's some really, I mean, it's really, really good things you can do in um, data.census.gov. I'm just going to, for instance, I'm going to take the uh, this table and I'm going to drop it into Excel. Uh, told me it downloaded it, so I'm going to believe them. Of course, when I open up the Excel cell spreadsheet, you're not going to see it uh, because I haven't shared it. But if you give me one minute here. Share. That was what I wanted. But at any rate, it opens up an Excel spreadsheet, and if you're, you can drop this into any, um, uh, you know, statistical uh, program to uh, move, move the numbers about, and uh, be able to look at those. Oh, I just unshared my whole thing. Bear with me one second. Okay, hopefully you're seeing my uh, presentation again uh, with scenario two up. We see the live demo of data.census.gov with the United States um, slide. Okay. Do you see me moving it? I think somehow I'm not. Oh, wait, it's not shared. Yes, sir, I'm, we I'm, don't. Okay. Bear with me a second. Okay, and share presentation share. There we go. So um, back in our scenario here, uh, the the information that we found um, will give uh, Maria and Norma uh, again, who is a Navy veteran. Um, 
show that the, the business is uh, equally owned. Uh, Maria is not a veteran, a vet, non-vet uh, organization. Uh, and then uh, both her and her sister are designated as a uh, fully female owned firm. And the reason why that is notable is because they can get um, uh, grants and uh, SBA uh, assistance and uh, VA assistance for uh, being a veteran owned firm and then being a fully female owned uh, firm. So those are some of the places they can go to get funded. And um, that is the end of scenario two. And this reaches the uh, the end of our our uh, presentation. Uh, don't forget that uh, the data dissemination and training is out here. That's the the uh, group that Misty uh, um, and myself work for. Or in these pictures somewhere. Um, or you can get webinars. You can uh, um, get access to courses, data gems, or bring out. A uh, training to your organization, and that again is available at uh, census.gov/academy uh, is the page, and it takes you to this landing page. And then you could look up a myriad of uh, webinars and uh, courses on how to handle uh, data. And there's some really good things out there called data gems, and data gems are just short. Um, you know, two to four minute videos that demonstrate how to uh, do something like, for instance, how to look for veterans, uh, how to look for um, race and ethnicity, um, how to uh, um, just how to how there's the little things that just are how they're done and their um, number of them are done by our data dissemination specialists. Um, and we're used as the front people. Okay. So, uh, the data sets is the training. Uh, there's, there's what we do. And then um, I thank you. Uh, let's continue the conversation. If you have any uh, uh, questions out there, please, please feel free to contact me directly. Um, email is usually the best way to get a hold of me. And then finally, uh, they'll be putting it in the chat here. Uh, do a uh, do us a favor and uh, evaluate us. Tell us how we did. Tell us what you like, what you didn't like um, about this webinar, and uh, we would be uh, happy to get to you. Are there any uh, questions in the uh, chat that we need to address? No. I think they were able to cover them all. Okay, great. All right, uh, let's go ahead and um, close this out by me saying, you know, thank you, and stay connected with the uh, census data. Um, we're on a number of social social media sites, and also I'm going to point out uh, this: be able to sign up for um, the different content set from the uh, set from the Census Bureau. For instance, today they just had a press release on um, uh, the post-secondary educational um, longitudinal data. And this, this is where you can subscribe to, to see that. Uh, you can subscribe to both demographic and economic uh, data. Um, and that's about it. I really appreciate you guys coming up. Uh, if you're from the media and you have any questions, we need you can call the uh, media office here. And of course, if if you need help um, uh, with anything census and you don't know where else to go, you can always call the non-media inquiry number and they will route you to uh, the proper place to get you help. And that is the end of the presentation. And again, I thank you. And I'll turn it back over to Kim.
Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Misty. We appreciate your presentation today. Before we conclude, I'd like to thank everyone who played a role in today's webinar. We thank you, our audience, for spending your time with us this afternoon. Please take a moment to fill out the evaluation by following the link provided in chat. Look out for the recording, presentation, and related materials from this webinar on the Census Academy 